In this tutorial, we are going to cover checkbox data validation in Google Sheets. Let's get cracking. You can use validation on checkboxes to enforce the entry of a true or false item. So let's have a look at this. As you can see up here in the formula bar, it says false. If we click it, it will say true, true or false. If your users go in and they get a little bit carried away and type in false, then it will be fine. If they type in fake news, they will get an error. So this helps protect the checkbox as much as possible. One thing to note that if your enterprising data entry person decides it hits the delete button, then it will actually delete what's in the cell. So while it is great, there is one fatal flaw, unfortunately. So it's control Z to get that back. Okay, so let's see how that works. Let's right click and scroll down to data validation. And we can see here our criteria, we've selected checkbox and we can use custom cell values or not. In our case, if we want just a true value and a false value, we're not going to check that box. We'll reject the input, show validation, help text, and we will save. Okay, on to the next one. You can also change what is truthy and what is falsy by selecting the use custom cell value item. So here, our response is yeah or nah in a very Australian term for true and false. If I click the box, if you look up the top here in the formula bar, you can see nah for a false item and yeah for a true item. If I typed in true, oh, it'll come up with an error. If I typed in yeah, it'll be fine. If I typed in false, it'll come up with an error. But if I go nah, and make sure you say it like that, it'll come up falsy. So how did we do that? Let's right click again, down to data validation, and have a look. So here I've checked the criteria to checkbox, and this time I've checked the use custom cell value. And here I've got checked for yeah, and unchecked for nah. Um, this helps you if you wanna have a specific value for a checked item or not. And it will help with the validation help text too for your users when they wanna enter something in. For me, this isn't entirely helpful, but it might be helpful if you're using it to create a true or false item from another cell value. So let's have a look at the next example. So here we've got responses is zero, one from a rounded value. Here I've got 0 0.3, and here you can see in the background we've got a cell that equals round C4. So round means round up or round down. So if I've got something that is 0 0.6, it will round up and be one, and the response says that one is satisfactory. If we want something more than one, so if I said two, it's gonna come up with an error here, okay? Invalid. I think our validation was only suggesting instead of strict. If I go one, it'll be fine. If I go zero, it'll be fine, or 0 0.2 will be fine. So 0 0.2 will round down to zero, and 0 0.2, six will round up to one. That's what's going on. So how did we achieve this? Let's right click again, go down to data validation. We've got a checkbox, use custom cell values. And now our checkbox occurs when the value equals one or, or is unchecked when the value equals zero. We've rejected the input. So we actually have rejected the input, but it appears it did pop up. And we show uh, and we showed validation help, which was completely useless. So let's change that now to say response. Whoops. Response is zero or one. And hit save. Okay. So you won't be able to check the box manually because it's assigned to another cell. And whenever that changes, that will update. So it'll just give you some convenient data validation if something is wrong here. Okay, that's it for using checkboxes in data validation. We'll wrap up the tutorial with something uh, I think will be pretty handy for you. Catch you in the next tutorial.